welcome everyone. We really appreciate you joining us today. I know that webinars are, they, you know, there's a bit of webinar fatigue, but I think this conversation between AWS and IBM is really, it's two titans in the industry, so to speak. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how they can resolve some of the enterprise dilemmas that we face. And now, without further ado, over to you, James, our moderator. Thank you very much, Michelle. Thank you so much. And I'd like to introduce myself first. I'm not sure I've done that. I'm James Erasmus. <laughs> I'm, I'm the moderator for today, and I represent Tech Central. And my knowledge, I've just admitted earlier to the panelists before we started this call, my knowledge of cloud comes from having read Cloud Computing for Dummies, which I also realized was published quite a few years ago, and a lot has changed. But that also being said, is a lot has happened in the last few months around cloud. IT leaders are really engaged in this topic. People realize that the relevance of it, they realize the importance of it, and there's an absolute demand from the customer side for the data and the integrity of the data to be secured in a cloud environment, knowing that it's a safer environment than perhaps, in my instance, where it might be just saved on a server or, God forbid, on someone's hard drive. So... A lot of what we're going to talk about today is really getting to understand the IBM and AWS partnership, an exciting opportunity where the two megaliths have come together and how they benefit each other and support their existing and new clients. Also really important to understand the context of cloud, where it's going in South Africa, what they can do to support that. And then to also talk about some of the more technical aspects around how cloud can be integrated and needs to be integrated, but how? We can all you know, look at the basics of it, but there's some very complex aspects to cloud computing and that migration. How is your business transformation being managed and what are the risks and concerns you need to consider? And so I suppose in a nutshell, let me start by introducing Hiren, who is talking about purpose. I've told everyone what the purpose is of today's call. And I'd first like to introduce Hiren Bula. Hiren is an associate partner at IBM Consulting here in South Africa. And he's joined by his colleague, Riaz Osman, who is the managing partner of IBM Consulting, Global Business Services. And then their partner from what used to be our Far Shores, but now welcome Amazon to South Africa, Rashika Rabla, AWS country lead, looking after quite specifically the public sector. So thank you very much, the three of you, for making time. Thank you for what I know is going to be an insightful conversation and all the preparation that you put into today. I think the audience are longing to hear more from you than from me. So I'm going to hand over and ask Riaz to kick off, if you don't mind. Sure. Thanks a lot, James. So firstly, a warm welcome to all of you. And thank you for taking the time out this morning to be with IBM and our esteemed partner, AWS. I know it's December, but we're amazed at the audience that we've gathered here today. So thank you very much. And just to introduce IBM Consulting, not many of you may be aware, or I hope a lot of you are aware, that IBM recently simplified our business. We simplified it into two major components, IBM Technology, which is our systems and software business, and IBM Consulting. IBM Consulting is the professional services arm of IBM. One of the reasons why we rebranded is for IBM Consulting to take its rightful place amongst the leading consulting organizations globally and in Africa. IBM is making huge investments in the professional services business. We certainly see our business pivoting significantly in that direction. We're also making huge investments in growing our skills, growing our assets, and jointly going to market with key strategic partners such as AWS, who are the best at what they do. And we believe the combination of AWS and IBM is a match made in heaven. IBM Consulting offers the full breadth of consulting services. And this includes strategy, what we call experience-based digital transformation, data analytics, artificial intelligence. We, one of the largest systems integrators in the world, Application modernization and application managed services is a key part of our business. And obviously, a huge part of our business and our strategy is cloud advisory, migration, and management. So our mantra is to assist clients to become virtual enterprises. 
a virtual enterprise built on cloud, artificial intelligence, and intelligent workflows. What we mean by intelligent workflows is business processes infused with AI and machine learning. And we believe that IBM is certainly the best at that. So you could think of a virtual enterprise as a cognitive enterprise in an always on virtual world. That is our mantra to get our clients to that space. At AWS reInvent recently in Las Vegas, IBM was named AWS Rising Partner of the Year. We have a fantastic track record with AWS and we are really proud of the accolade. IBM estimates that only about 20% of client workloads have moved to a cloud environment. For our clients, what lies ahead of them is certainly the big job of moving to the cloud. IBM's focus is now on helping our clients to execute. In terms of execution, we believe that the combination of IBM and AWS offers our clients significant technology and business value. Enjoy the rest of this session and thank you very much. Thank you, Riaz. That's a lovely introduction. And you really embodied what has become a very positive influence on this country and the movement towards cloud. And I think it's wonderful to see that we can all recognize that we bring certain skills to the party, a lot of which IBM already had and I gather have been able to bring over to AWS. And similarly, that merger and that partnership has definitely created some very positive sharing of IP. So we look forward to hearing more about that in a minute. Before I hand over to Hiren, I think it's actually quite interesting to identify who and how many different industries have latched onto this as a topic that, granted, the 7th of December, they still need to be absorbing and engaging in. Just to name a few of the different industries that we've got on the call, and I'm looking at the registration list, and it's extensive, so I'm by no means not going to read every name, every brand or company, but just in terms of industries that are on this call of which they're represented by 200 different registrations, is a number of different industries as accounting, aerospace and defense, agriculture, banking and securities, financial institutions, education, energy, chemical, government is federal, state and local, insurance, manufacturing, retail, telcos, transport. So the different industries that are engaging here I think to a large extent, I'm wondering perhaps where do we start or we have started? What next? And Irene, can I hand over to you to ask you to please just talk a bit more about IBM and AWS and where you think this audience might need most to understand? Sure. Thank you very much, James. And uh, yeah, welcome to the audience. This is a fantastic opportunity in December. Great attendance. I have the honor to talk about the journey, to talk about where we began and where we are going. So I've kind of changed it up a bit, you know, webinar fatigue, PowerPoint presentations. I think everyone is a bit tired of it. So I've kind of rallied up the troops, spent the weekend with the family, creating a bit of pieces of art that I will take you through. So, you know, I think just by default, IBM and AWS is the topic of discussion, but I would like to start with a concept of hybrid cloud. You know, I think everyone has heard, and IBM in particular say that is, we are interested in the architecture battle, not the destination. So in 2021, earlier this year, our chairman did announce that our strategy is to be hybrid cloud and AI. As you can see depicted in this picture are all the clouds that I think most companies are engaged with. You would see, you know, the likes of AWS in particular, and I'll talk a lot more about our partnership in AWS, but, you know, the likes of Red Hat, the likes of VMware, Google, you know, the mainframe. I think companies have a bit of each of these in their stack. And once they have it, and, and what this picture is meant to depict is that kind of everyone is on the swing and enjoying the ride of all of these clouds. And, you know, eventually, once you're on that journey, I think it's quite a nice ride. But I think the, the other message is that we have announced that there's a massive investment 
in the strategic partnership landscape. AWS is one of those strategic partners, one of the main strategic partners. And in 2019, there was a CEO to CEO handshake, IBM and AWS. And basically what that meant is that we had agreed on a five-year business plan. We had put in place an exec leader to manage the AWS global partnership. We were a bronze partner in re-event, and this was in 2019. In 2020, we had a concept of build. And in the build, we were a platinum partner in the re-event AWS event. We focused on industries like government, telco, retail, etc. We also then grew our capability and competency in SAP, in security, and I'll cover that a little bit later. In 2021, this year, I think this has been a fantastic year, where we became the rising star partner, as Riaz mentioned. We will be achieving at the end of this year 10,000 AWS certifications. We've also created a go-to-market team with the AWS team. We've got a joint architecture council that's been formed between IBM and AWS. And we've been ranked as the number one in service competencies and a number three player in all the competencies. I think the other main topic in this depiction of art is that we've gone on an acquisition where we bought the companies NordCloud and Taos, where NordCloud will be servicing our region, the Europe and Middle East Africa region. And the big reason for NordCloud is that they've got massive AWS accelerators and assets, one of them being Clarity that works on the billing and cost optimization. The Taos acquisition is specifically for the North America region. I'm thinking about innovation and time to market, but maybe I'm jumping ahead of you. I will be covering some case studies where I will be talking about some of the lessons learned and what they've been able to achieve. But from a time to market, obviously, what we do is we help customers in that journey to the cloud, ensure they become agile, ensure they become scalable, so that when business demands come into the IT team, they are able to deliver a lot faster. And many of our customers have achieved that KPI in terms of getting the increase or reducing their time to market. So thank you. Look forward to hear about SAP. So one of the focus areas that I'd like to cover is SAP. Mm -hmm. So IBM is the largest system integrator of SAP. We have the largest install base. AWS has more than 5,000 clients running SAP on AWS. IBM has created many assets and many accelerators and methods, some of them being impact, which are very industry focused, as well as a concept of rapid discovery. And that basically helps clients move to the cloud a lot faster. So what we've done is we've gone to AWS and we've worked with adapting those assets, accelerators and methods into the AWS cloud to help clients move into the cloud more rapidly. Basically, what we believe is the combination of AWS, IBM, and SAP will give you innovation. And that gives a view of all the comprehensive suite of tools that's available between AWS and IBM in running the SAP workloads on AWS and to transform the workloads to move them onto AWS. So this picture, and I'm not sure if you can see this clearly, but it's meant to depict the complexity of moving to the cloud. So what you would see is companies that have legacy that kind of have dying applications, and that's the mummy that I'm trying to represent in there, to help those companies to move to the cloud. So, you know, as was mentioned earlier, 20% of workloads have moved to the cloud. The rest of the workloads are complex. And that is where IBM comes in. With our experience, with the fact that we've been working with companies for a hundred years, we know the complexities that exist in those applications. So what we tend to do is 
through the competencies that we have available, we then go in and assess the various applications and help companies to transform over a period of time into a modern type of world into the cloud. And what I've tried to represent in this corner is the well-architected framework of AWS and the IBM garage method for cloud. Together, we've combined and we've adapted, again, our assets being the IBM garage method for cloud and the AWS well-architected framework to ensure we bring them together to help clients move into the cloud through common frameworks and common methods. I think what's important in this visual as well is the regulator. So it's an archaeologist in there to ensure that all the rules are met, to ensure that, you know, the Poppy Act, the GDPR Act, the PCI compliance, you know, the FSS compliance, all of that we have available. We've done this globally. It's something that we are very comfortable to help customers ensure they meet regulatory frameworks. Okay. Thanks, Ren. I'm, lo- I'm loving your artwork. Great job to you and Thank your you. family. Yeah, it's my script, not my art. <laughs> well done. The other big area is security. So one of the big areas of focus, and I think globally and more importantly, South Africa is security. I think a lot of companies are afraid of the cloud because they are unsure whether it is secure enough. Through IBM Security, you know, where we've got many accolades on the security that we are able to provide, we've joined forces with AWS. And again, through the security methods and the well-architected framework, we've come together, we've created a joint method to help companies in the security on the cloud. I think the most important here is that the threat detection that's available through the IBM security products and capabilities on the cloud. What that basically does, it helps detect cloud misconfigurations. And we do find that that's quite common. So there's proactive cloud misconfigurations that are identified. There's identification of policy changes. So again, somebody on the flight could make some form of a policy change without understanding the impact. So this security capability on AWS detects that early. And the other area is suspicious user activity. So we look at any kind of activity by users that may be suspicious. So again, I think AWS providing the platform and the infrastructure with the IBM security on top, I think that's a perfect recipe. Erin, can I ask, how is the security tied into the actual workloads and the way in which the, so there's that advanced automation and what's referred to as cognitive analytics? How is that related? How does is, how is one trigger the other? So what happens is that when workloads enter into the cloud, let's call it that, there's data fabric capability that's available to understand the workload and the data within it. So through the solutions that sit on the cloud on AWS, we are able to detect within the data whether there's any kind of malicious intent in the data itself. So there's, you know, it goes quite okay. deep into the actual workload. It's not just on the surface, if that And it, that's an automated process, is it? That's an automated process, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so this is a restaurant. And basically, in your, what we aim to achieve is human-centric design. And again, human-centric design in line with the cognitive virtual enterprise is probably the most important. So, you know, companies can go to the cloud, they can buy infrastructure, they can buy the platform, but they also need to ensure they think about the AI, they need to think about the data, 5G, machine learning. So all of this kind of comes together with the likes of IBM, with AWS, underpinned by all of these various capabilities. So I think the message here is ensure what the client requires is provided as a solution as opposed to just providing a uh, piece of tin, you know, and that's where we come in together to provide all of that capability, you know, on top of the AWS platform. Thanks. I I mentioned the customer earlier, and it's lovely to hear you repeating that because true business agility puts a customer at the absolute center of everything you do. 
And it's definitely something that, that I've understood from Amazon's perspective is that they really understand that client's need. Whereas IBM have been very much a, a corporate business focus on backend and technology. And it sounds like you've really re-engineered your thinking to be far more customer centric, if I could say. Exactly, exactly. You know, and, and this talks to all the topics that people talk about blockchain, machine language, 5G, you know, it brings it all together, really, and it makes it a lot easier to take that journey. So my KPI is digital transformation. This is clearly taking me on the right steps to achieving my KPI, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. So this is the picture you should actually remember to get mm. to that. You know, imagine sitting in a restaurant and you've got all of these pieces like the data is the wine there, you know, so okay. it fills up, you know, your, your, your full, you know, you've got blockchain, etc. So, so this is definitely your transformation. Thanks for the analogy. Right. So I'll go to case studies. And this is a rail network. Basically, what's happened with this rail network is that they have got quite a lot of legacy in the estate. They've asked us to come in to have a look at the estate to give them a view of the as is, the to be, understand the disposition of the applications, the affinity for the cloud. So we've engaged through the various methods that I talked about. How do we do this? We've got something called a CBM or component business model for cloud, which kind of assesses the maturity of an organization in the journey to the cloud and gives them a bit of a heat map on what they should be doing to get to the cloud. So what this picture is meant to depict is that, you know, the train is obviously on the tracks. There needs to be modernization in place to keep it on the tracks. So what we would do is to ensure that we put the tracks back, you know, to ensure that the train continues. And I think what's important here is that the strategy, the target operating model, all of that is really key to determine the next step in the journey. So what we've done is spend quite a few months to unpack and get into that level of detail. The next step is now to advise on the cloud provider to work with the likes of AWS on determining the next step for this organization to start leveraging the cloud. Erin, you talk about next steps. Just remind me, what is my first step? Assess. Assess. And assess. that would be done in partnership with IBM. Correct. So the assessment, we would do that with the client to understand because a lot of companies don't really know the magnitude of their estate and mm. the maturity of the estate. Okay. So the assessment helps them determine that. Thank you. So I guess you would question, what is a bank and a Marlboro have in common? So in your, you know, I think that the biggest question most companies have is, how do I transform and not pay more? So what we've done with a bank in Spain and a company, Philip Morris International, who manufactures Marlboro internationally based in Netherlands, is work with them to determine how can they take the current spend, so over a period of time, and, and let's assume it's five years, keep the money in the bank, in the vault, right, without taking any money out, and modernize, right? So what we've gone in is the assess and a business case. So we provided an initial business case to determine what would it take for them to go into this digital transformation journey. We then looked at channeling their existing funds. So if you have to picture, you know, let's say 100 million that is being used over a five-year period to run, to keep the lights on, we take that 100 million and we slowly eat up from the 100 million over the five-year period to ensure that at the end of the five years, they don't spend any more than they should. So the 100 million is still the 100 million, right? So, you know, I think that's one of the big questions that we are asked all the time. And again, we start with the initial business case, we do the assessment, we provide a POC because a lot of companies want to show and tell. So we take an application, we show them. And in the Philip Morris example or case study, we worked with AWS 
to do that POC, to do the show and tell, to ensure that they have clarity in what they will get from the cloud. And then once they're happy with that, we then went into a firm business case. We agreed with KPIs of cost savings. We agreed on KPIs of productivity gains. And we put that all into a contract that would be signed and we would need to achieve that over that period of time. So these are the two you know, big success stories. And you know, I think with the bank, eventually they got to a digital or they, they're in the journey of getting into a digital bank. And that's really the story that I wanted to share in this picture. Aaron, thank you for that. I, I often think that we see business as you know, business and IT or business and IT are trying to work together, but there's very often a third party to be navigated. And that is the IT leader trying to convince the financial controls to release yes, the funds. Exactly. Um, trying to support the initiative, trying to see why they should sustain that payment over a period of time. So if you've got that case study and that example of how the template can be driven for, through a, a business case with KPIs, that's very, very useful to both business and IT. Exactly. And again, finance is not going to approve anything without a business case, without a return on investment. And we've understood that we've got the templates and that's why it's quite an important step in the journey. Super. Hiren, realizing we need to hear a bit more from, from about AWS, yep. how much I'm time done. have we got with your beautiful slides? I'm done. I was going to say, <laughs> you, forgot, you, you, you forgot to draw on that one. <laughs> I was quite looking forward to the next slide. Thank you, Hiren. That was really insightful. And I love your use of artwork and not death by PowerPoint. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, James. Um, what I'm going to suggest is we actually try and take some scans of those images and include them in the follow-up mailer or in the article that's published after this through Tech Central. Sure, yeah. Good if you don't mind, just get it to, to please sign the bottom right-hand corner. <laughs> I realize that business transformation is often hampered by a number of different issues, some which can be anticipated, some which really can't be anticipated. And what I'm understanding is that migrating to the cloud doesn't necessarily remove those issues, but it takes away some of the major risks associated with not migrating to the cloud. And I think that at the moment, both as an IT leader, but also as, as business, we're trying to focus on product delivery. So Rashika, please you tell us a bit more about AWS and specifically AWS in South Africa and AWS in the public sector, but how the partnership has enabled and how AWS enables me as a business to focus on product delivery. 100%. Thanks, James. And here, and that was a wonderful presentation, hey? very dynamic, very different. I think the audience really loved that, especially in December. Riaz, to you, I think what you mentioned in terms of IBM and AWS, a match made in heaven, that is true. I 100% agree with you. Thank you, James. And good morning to our esteemed guests. I'm thrilled about chatting to you today, together with one of our biggest partners, IBM, in the last few days of 2021. I know it has been a difficult and painful year for a lot of us with the COVID situation, but at AWS, we've had a great year and our customers as well. One such experience I want to share with you, and I think you can boast about this a little bit, is that we all heard about the Omicron virus, which a lot of the countries thought was initiated right here in South Africa. It was later discovered that the Omicron virus had already been present in many of the countries, but discovered first by a South African company called Hyrax Biosciences, who actually uses AWS for enormous computing power and machine learning to undertake genomic sequencing and surveillance to make this discovery. And this is the power of AWS that we bring to our customers through partners like IBM. Our AWS vision is to contribute meaningfully to South Africans' lives by improving and transforming healthcare, education, service delivery, and the achievement of national goals through digitization and the fourth industrial revolution solutions. Within five to seven years, our ambitious goal is to uplift South Africa by helping the country journey from a third world country to a first world country. We want to influence the healthcare systems and the education systems such that South Africa will be able to provide equal quality and accessible education and healthcare to all South Africans. We want, this means, for instance, providing doctors and healthcare um, providers a resilient and sustainable health system so that they can focus on their core business of enabling healthy people. This also means providing educators 
an easily accessible and innovative means of providing education so that they can focus on the fundamental practice of educating people. We want to transform all of government services so that every interaction from a citizen perspective is digitized. That means from cradle to grave, enabling smart cities. We want to enable better government operations such as economic development, security and defense, justice, revenue management, etc. Imagine a world where government services are completely digitized and integrated. For instance, imagine a life cycle of a person. A child is born, certified in hospital, then immunized through early childhood, attends school, gets an ID, gets a driver's license, gets a traffic fine or two, gets a job, gets a passport, pays taxes, owns a house with utilities, gets married, and after a long and meaningful and purposeful life, they pass on. We all know that these stages of life require interactivity with government services. Now, imagine if all these services were completely digitized and integrated and were seamless from a user experience. Imagine how great that would be. No more queues, no more admin, completely seamless and automated. In terms of education, imagine schools in deep rural villages or metros where children can explore foreign countries, deep space or the world's oceans through virtual reality, which is personalized in their home language. These possibilities are already realities with AWS and through our partners like IBM supporting us in deploying these kinds of solutions and consulting on these types of solutions. So why do companies choose AWS for their journey to digital transformation? At AWS, our experience is second to none, supporting more than a million customers globally. To illustrate, the Gartner Magic Quadrant names AWS as a leader in cloud infrastructure and platform services for 11 consecutive years. AWS is also a pioneer in cloud services. Again, a first in South Africa, it was developed right here in Cape Town in 2004. AWS is the largest cloud services provider, having a global footprint of 25 regions and comprising of 81 availability zones. AWS is cost effective and we have reduced our price point more than 88 times proactively because of course, being the largest cloud services provider, economies of scale works in our favor for our customers, at times providing up to 70% in discounts on an already compelling price point. AWS is secure. We understand that you are concerned about data security and sovereignty. With AWS being in country in South Africa, your data will remain in country and not be moved anywhere else unless you decide to do so. So the data sovereignty is maintained. AWS is vigilant about privacy and data security. And IBM, as Hiran mentioned, IBM really helps in this regard in terms of consulting on data security. AWS does not have visibility or knowledge of your customer data. We also have the largest suite of advanced technologies both in depth and breadth to suit our customers' needs. We have more than 200 fully featured services in the fourth industrial revolution solutions. And this truly reflects that we are at the cutting edge of innovation. With AWS having all this capability for our customers, we understand that customers may not have the skills to traverse the next generation technologies. And this is why the IBM relationship is so critical and they are a critical and trusted stakeholder in helping customers to be successful on their digital transformation journey using AWS. Hiran has mentioned all the accolades that IBM has, and I just wanna reiterate. IBM has eight AWS consulting competencies ranging from DevOps, SAP, migration, government and security consulting. IBM has been successful on six AWS partner programs in illustrating the expertise in selling government and public sector solutions as well as to the private sector. And what makes IBM so successful in over a hundred customer launches that they have accomplished is that they are super skilled in AWS technology services and solutions. IBM has 12 AWS service validations and over 8,500 AWS certifications across their workforce. And as Hiran mentioned, in the coming year, up to 10,000 of their workforce will be certified in AWS, making them the ideal and trusted consulting and implementation partner for AWS. 
So to end, I'm proud to say that AWS is South African locally homegrown right here in Cape Town in 2004 as the development center. We support and provide services to over 7,500 government agencies, over 14,000 academic institutions, and over 35,000 nonprofit organizations around the world, many of them deploying cutting edge solutions. My aim, and together with the help of IBM, is to bring this wealth of innovation solutions back home to South Africa so we can improve education, healthcare, government services, to leapfrog South Africa from a developing third world country to a first world country, improving South Africans' lives right now. And therefore we are exceptionally proud of IBM as our partner in helping us achieve this ambition. So thank you to our IBM partner. We really are looking forward to this partnership and us driving the economy together, driving South Africa forward and really digitally transforming South Africa going forward from government services to banking, to retail sector and so on. Thank you very much. Rishika, thank you. That's really insightful. And I'm thrilled to see how you managed to make that as locally relevant as possible, because I think a lot of us are looking at AWS as this global body. And, and we know the successes you've had on, on, on other shores. The successes that you've had here, can you tell us some of the examples of some work that you've done recently and where perhaps even if they're only some examples of perhaps a pilot? Thank you. No, 100%. Well, we've had a number of successes here. So I spoke about Hyrex Biosciences. They are a mm -hmm. South African company, right? So they found the Omicron virus and they're using AWS technology to do that. We also have another customer called GovChat. They're actually quite a small customer. They developed this platform for government services. And mm -hmm. right now they've had over 10 million hits on their site. So government services such as applying for grants, reporting any problems in their community and so on. So they have been really very, very successful. Over 10,000 subscribers, not 10,000, 10 million, sorry, 10 million subscribers on that GovChat platform. So that's another one that we can talk about. There are quite a few. So in terms of Precalt, Precalt also is a health mm -hmm. um, platform that they are doing multiple things. They actually provide services very similar to GovChat where they are providing like chat lines to nurses and doctors. And during the COVID situation, it helped them if they wanted to chat to somebody, if they wanted to find out more, the latest information with regards to COVID and so on. So those are the big ones that I really wanted to chat to you about today. Super. Thank you very much. And talk about chatting. One of the things we do best at Tech Central is we get people together. We get people like IBM and AWS, and we have these open conversations and, and insightful, meaningful dialogue. And as great as it is to be doing it in a virtual way like this, we very much believe that the physical space is something that we need to embrace if and when we can. And we have a lot of potential and planned and diarized roundtables planned for next year, one of which is IBM and AWS. And we really look forward to knowing who on this call would be interested in attending one of those physical roundtables, the format of which will be dictated by COVID probably, but we very much look forward to being present in each other's company. Now, a few more questions before we sort of start wrapping up, because I realize we've actually only got 11 minutes to go. And now's a good opportunity to chat about the complexities of these engagements. And if I was to be starting my journey and I've had a foray, I've read the book behind me, I competing for dummies. I have given it a go on my own. I've done my best and I'm stuck. Where to start? Hiren clearly identified is, is to assess the situation and identify where we're at right now. But how do we navigate you know, a potential pilot? And what are the complexities around delivering a pilot uh, migration? To me, it's to keep it as simple as possible. So, you know, there's a lot of complexity in organizations and especially the larger ones that run multiple applications. So you've got to sort of zone in on where you can get the biggest bang for your buck, if I can put it that way. Absolutely. A group of applications that won't cause disruption to your organization, but where you can do the move and analyze the impact and use that as the stimulus to then prioritize the other 
uh, workloads in your organization that should be moved. So, you know, my advice is keep it simple, but start somewhere and in a non-disruptive way to your organization. What does that look like in terms of a pilot? So if I just ask that. So the way I would do it is obviously uh, when you do the assessment, you would cluster and create your application to application and application to infrastructure dependencies. You then would decide with the client what would be the least disruptive, I think, as Riaz mentioned. We then could agree on one application, potentially with the least amount of dependencies to either other applications or infrastructure and things like middleware, et cetera, and use that as the case to determine you know, the path to the cloud and also run that in the cloud for a period of time. Because what we also find is, and, and a lot of South Africans would be aware of, bull shock. So you run an application, run cloud workloads for a period of time, and suddenly you get the bull and it's bull shock, right? So, and, and then they have to scramble around. So we would advise to do that before you go and do everything as a big bang. Okay. Apart from that, what, what, what are some other surprises that we might need to react quite quickly to as a result of the migration? You know, unknown analytics, risks, opportunities, so latency is obviously a big issue, you know, so yeah. you typically work with an application that's in a data center next to your office. Now, if you've got critical applications, you have to always consider latency. There are many ways to sort that out, but that's one of the biggest concerns clients have in terms of what would that latency, what would that speed be and response time be for an application when it's run in the cloud. You know, I think when you've got a multi-cloud environment, you need to also think about how does the cloud, the one cloud, talk to the other cloud. So there's a whole architecture that needs to be created, the target operating model, to ensure that that is also taken care of, you know. So again, it comes with speed, latency, and the user experience ultimately. So, you know, those would be the big areas that I would focus on. 100%. Thanks, James, I could just add to what Hiran is saying. So it's a great thing that with AWS, we don't have much of a latency. You don't add that, Hiran. <laughs> you don't have much of that latency challenges because we are in country. And if you want a super fast, like if you're doing high performance computing and you want really like immediate results, then you can deploy an outpost solution, which is practically on premise. It's part of the cloud, but on premise. And there's practically no latency issues there. I mean, we can share the stats in terms of how many milliseconds it is after the call. But those are some of the things, as IBM mentioned, that they look at in terms of what are you looking for as a customer in terms of risks and then the opportunities that are available. I mean, cost cutting, Hiran mentioned bull shock. In terms of cost cutting, I mean, no more do you need to deploy services and infrastructure and have your staff supporting that kind of infrastructure because you can focus on your core business and you can focus on innovation through cloud. You only pay for what you use. So it's a utility-based service. Mm. It's not as if you are paying for this entire CapEx outlay and then you have to refresh after three to five years. Here you're paying for only what you use. So imagine deploying one of your simple services like your web services onto cloud for now just to actually experience what it is like. It has minimal risk. It has minimal dependencies and integration and so on. And then see the, the cost benefit analysis of that, how easy it is to deploy and use. And then, you know, you don't need that infrastructure. You don't need multiple hands supporting it. You can just focus on your innovation, generating revenue and your core business going forward. Thank you. What I'm also definitely hearing then, there's an element of cost saving or cost consideration, but there's also a large portion of upskilling and reskilling, which can also happen at the same time in your workforce. Can I jump into a question here that's being posed by an anonymous asking for a friend? What is the benefit of running IBM products like Maximo and CloudPack for data products on top of the AWS platform? If you didn't mind answering that, just quite briefly, please. So obviously the big thing is your outlay of infrastructure in your data center. So, you know, you obviously are able to run it on an AWS. We've gone in with AWS for IBM Maximo as an example, and we've created a solution where it's 
you know, I don't like to use the word, but plug and play, where you kind of take the Maximo solution, it's already built for AWS, and you yeah. can host it on AWS pretty much. And that gives you all the features, all the capabilities of a full-blown Maximo enterprise asset management suite solution on the cloud. And, and the same for all the cloud pack for data, cloud pack for integration. It's yeah. all already, you know, adapted for AWS. We've got OpenShift in the middle, which means that it, you know, OpenShift can pretty much run on any cloud. And, you know, with AWS, we see quite a, a big update of all of our products on their platform. Thank you. And I, I definitely hear that there's a lot of capability that both parties bring. And you've shared some interesting images and some slides. And I'd love to ask if you could, could please share those with us. I'm sure there are a lot of people who are on the call that would like to see them. Rashika, I was particularly interested in one of your, your slides that had a lot of data on it, which of course we can't all ingest, which I'm sure is available somewhere on the internet. But if you could please share it with us and we'll disseminate that information that you can to the audience that's online and the attendees. So thank you very much for that insight into the the capabilities behind this incredible partnership, really, really insightful. And I'm, I'm very grateful to the three of you and all the team behind us. There's quite a lot of preparation that goes into these calls. None of these questions were staged. We didn't over-prepare for this, and other than to say that my esteemed panelists here really have shared a lot of valuable insights into this topic. And I, I then say that the poll results, which we'd like to see right now, please, indicate that there's definitely opportunity to spend more time together. There's definitely more opportunity to, to engage, to unpack some, some of the questions we have as users of your products, but also as potential partners in some other way. So thank you so much, the three of you, for your time. And thank you for those poll results, which we, we can all see. Invitations to roundtables will follow. And any closing remarks from any of the three of you on this call before we wrap up from me, James Erasmus at Tech Central? Mm. So James, uh, maybe just to wrap up, and again, my last picture is really just to accelerate the journey to the cloud, to AWS. We have the rule book, the K53, everyone knows it. We yeah. have patterns, we've created patterns with AWS. We have a unified cloud that we are able to provide. So we are able as a joint partner to move clients onto the cloud rapidly through all of our accelerators, patterns, and assets. I'm certainly reassured of that. Thank you, Hiran. Thank you, Rishika. And thank you, Riaz. Thank you so much, the three of you, for a fascinating morning of conversation around this topic, which we, we all know is absolutely vital to us. And we look forward to accelerating our digital transformation, migrating to the cloud, and doing it with the right people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Everyone. Thanks, everybody. And thanks for making the time.